Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed so much about seeds, let us look at their uses in agriculture because we just can't think of agriculture without seeds. So they help plant species to be colonized in different areas that is because Seeds are like uh, very small and easy to be uh, and are very portable so they can be carried from one place to another and also they get dispersed very easily. They get dispersed easily to new habitats. So wherever you put them, if you put sufficient water and the environmental conditions are proper, it will give rise to new plants. So that means the same species of plants can be grown in different areas with the help of seeds. It provides nourishment to the young seedlings. Now the seed in itself has the endosperm inside which keep on providing the nourishment to the embryo. Even during seed germination, the young seedlings need nourishment which is provided by the seeds. Ensure protection to the young embryo. That is because the embryo is there inside the seed. Seed also has outer tough covering for the seed coat. So that means it provides enough protection to the Embryo. Results in variations with new genetic combinations. Now, since seeds are very small, easy to carry, and they can also be stored easily because they are dehydrated and dormant, so they really do not need anything to be stored. So, they can be very easily stored. Now, since you can store a large variety of seeds, so you can also give rise to new genetic combinations. So, you have suppose XYZ varieties of seeds. Now, when you want to grow new plants, you can actually try to fuse the seeds one with the other and you can make new combinations and this can give rise to variations. They can be easily stored for future usage and it actually helps during days when there is not much of agriculture or something. When the weather conditions are not proper and plant reproduction is not happening in a very nice way, at that time, the stored seeds can be utilized to grow more and more plants. Long term viability of most of the seeds. Now, majority of the seeds, they are live for a long period of time. I mean, they remain alive. It is not that they become uh, dead. So, they have their viability for quite some time. So, they can be stored over years together. So now that we have discussed about seeds, another question strikes my mind. Is it possible to have seeds also without fertilization? Then like how we spoke about the parthenopartic fruits, where fruits were produced without fertilization. So on, in a similar way, can we have seeds also without fertilization? So we don't want fertilization to happen, but we want seeds. So is that possible? Right? A weird question, right? It sounds weird. But yes, that is possible. And that is why we have a technique called apomixis. So what is apomixis? The term apomixis means apo means away and mixis means mixing. So apomixis means away from mixing. So we do not want uh, the male and the female gametes to mix with each other. Without mixing, we will, able, we will be able to produce seeds. So that is called apomixis. So let us see what happens here. This is a mechanism to produce seeds without fertilization. So let us see how do we do that. So it is like a form of asexual reproduction where we really don't need to combine the traits of a male and a female gamete and then try to produce a zygote or something. So we just want to replicate the seeds. We just want to produce seeds of the same type. So it is kind of a sexual reproduction where clones are being produced. Exact copies of parents are being produced. So we are also going to do the same. Exact copy of the parent seeds are produced. So it is a form of asexual reproduction but it mimics sexual reproduction because the product which it gives, that is the product of sexual reproduction, that is seed. Right? But at the same time it is just copying the existing seed or it is just copying the parent seed. So that means it is like asexual reproduction. So now the question is, how does apomixis occur? So how this technique will take place? So let us see how exactly this apomixis occur. Now there are different ways by which apomixis can occur. 
So the first thing is by division of the new cellar cells. You remember the region new cellars, the mass of cells which were present inside the integument. So here the new cellar cells are present. Now sometimes what happens is these new cellar cells, they are all diploid cells. So these cells start dividing continuously. So they continuously divide and start entering inside the embryo cell. So what happens? These cells gradually develop into embryos. So therefore multiple embryos inside one ovule. So what happens? These new cellular cells which are diploid cells, they start dividing continuously. So they continuously divide and they start enter enter inside the embryo sac right so they start entering inside so they start entering inside the embryo sac so these cells which are formed by continuous di division they gradually develop into embryos so what happens the result is that multiple embryos are formed inside one ovule or inside one embryo sac, whatever you call it. So this is known as polyembryony. Polyembryony. That is many embryos. That, that means many embryo inside one ovule or inside one uh, embryo sac. So this is one way by which apomixis occurs. So here what happened, there was no fertilization, but still embryos one for, were formed. This is one way by which apomixis can occur. The next way is if the diploid egg cell directly develops into embryo. Now, if that normally the egg cell is what? It is haploid. But why the egg cell is haploid? Because it, because it is formed by meiosis, which is a reduction division. Now, if the egg cell is not formed by reduction division, in that case, what will happen? The egg cell will be deployed. So, if the egg cell is deployed, then the egg cell can directly develop into embryo because this is also 2N and embryo is also 2N. So, it will directly form embryo. There is no need of fusion. But otherwise, under normal situation, the egg cell is haploid, that is N. So, it needs another haploid cell so that they can fuse together to form a diploid cell. So, in the normal situation, after fertilization, a diploid zygote is formed and then that zygote later develops into embryo. But if the egg cell itself is diploid, in that case, it doesn't need another cell and it can itself directly develop into an embryo. So, these are the two ways by which apomixis can occur. So, now let us look at the importance of apomixis. How does apomixis help? So the first thing it helps is it is nothing but clonal reproduction through seeds. So we can actually produce a large number of the same variety of seeds without fertilization. So it is a very quick method to produce the produce clones of seeds. So new hybrids are produced in lesser time. Now normally if you want a hybrid, so what you have to do, you have to mix and match. So that includes, that takes a lot of time, that also that is also very costly. Because in order to maintain the hybrid, it is very difficult, right? But let us suppose if you have produced one hybrid, and now if you want to maintain the same hybrid, you want to produce the same hybrid plant over and again. So what do you do? You just make clones of that hybrid. And how do you make clones? By apomixis. So in this field, apomixis is extremely important, and that is why uh, research is still going on how to make apomixis more useful. Disease-free plants can be produced because you are actually making clones. So there will be no changes, no genetic variations, nothing. It is a cost-effective method because as I said, maintaining or creating new hybrids is very difficult. Now, let us suppose you mix and match two varieties and produce one hybrid. Now you like that hybrid and you want to produce more hybrids like that. So if you want to produce more hybrids, you actually need to do the same problem the entire process again. So that is going to involve time as well as money. So apomixis is a cost effective method where you can quickly produce clones of that new hybrid. Thank you. Please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.